What's going on everyone? Juicebags here, and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. When it comes to superstitions, we've all got our favorite map, or most of us at least, have a favorite map where, in you know, in our opinion, that map drops the best loot. Well, ever since pre-alpha stages, the Temple of the Necrotic has been that map for me. Uh, a lot of people don't like running this map. Uh, it does have uh, a decent amount of enemies, and it can be relatively slow running. However, like I said, all the way since pre-alpha, this map has just always given me great loot. I've had lots of luck on this map getting 10 out of 10 mods in the current state of the game. Uh, I had luck on this map getting legendary items back in the day when uh, legendaries were super rare and were a fixed amount. And this map is just the one. So we're going to bring along some Sonic Bats on this one. Uh, we're going to do some spawn camping on the two big lanes. Now, one of the things Sonic Bats have is they pierce packs of enemies. Uh, with that in mind, these particular two large lanes, this one and this one, the enemies spawn way back in there, and they have a long way to walk prior to even making it out of the spawn. Well, the Sonic Bat is going to allow us to pierce through the enemies that do come out and get all the way back in the spawn and start doing some killing. I personally am using um, Anti-Melee, Defense Rate, and Piercer Servo with Natural Frequency, Destruction, and Mass Destruction. Now, Anti-Melee could easily be swapped out with Crit Chance Servo. A Crit Chance Servo in a proper setup with boosts and buffs is going to be about 8% less damage overall to the enemies. Like with anti-melee, we're going to get the maximum damage to enemies that need that maximum damage, the melee enemies. The benefit with crit chance is we would get about 8% less damage, but it would be to all enemies instead of just the melee enemies. So you can kind of use either or. Uh, the amount of benefit for each one would be very small in whichever route you chose to take. Now, we're also going to be using some werewolves. Love me, the werewolf commander. Uh, accumulator hardened in defense rate with rebounding juggernaut and automation. Um, lots of people are always asking about the buff beam and the um, uh, boost our build. It's just standard issue stuff. Uh, destruction, boosted beam, and diffusion on the buff beams. And diverse... Uh, Crit damage, diverse power, defense range with destruction. Actually, I want to... Oh, that's my sky guard. Uh, diverse crit damage, diverse power, defense range with destruction, boosted power, and vampiric empowerment. So pretty standard builds. Uh, remember the pass through amount on boosts and buffs is a very small amount. So set them up how you want them. If you're given your boost stars and your buff beams more power and more crit damage, you're going to be good. So... Uh, additionally, I've got anti-heal on the reflect beam here. Now let's go ahead and build it out. Uh, we're going to start off right over on this lane. This lane, of course, we don't get that in-spawn uh, pierce opportunity, but it is a pretty darn straight lane, um, and we're going to hit all of the enemies in the lane. Now, in addition to that, this particular lane um, is slanted upward, which is perfect for the Sonic Bats piercing through and hitting enemies behind. So there's just no doubt in my mind that every enemy in this lane is going to get slapped. Additionally, with the Sonic Bats, another really cool thing you have is you've got the opportunity to use the coolest looking projectile in the game. Now, we're going to seriously overkill this lane. Uh, we're going to go with some werewolves, which is completely unneeded. Uh, however, these are all skeletons. Now, we know skeletons take increased damage from fire damage, so we're just going to throw a couple of flamars on each lane and call it good here. Now, I use an all-for-one Skyguard Tower. Um, destruction, all-for-one, and deadly strikes. With controller, defense range, and defense rate, this gives me maximum range on a Skyguard without putting a whole lot of effort into it, so we can use one Skyguard basically to clear the entire map. Uh, taking a look at it, we're at 10k range now. Uh, we go ahead and give it um, a diffusion and a range pylon. And we're going to get up to that max range. So completely unneeded. Uh, we're way past what we need. But max range and 
we're going to have one Skyguard clearance booth of those flyer lands. Now, moving back over to these juicy spawn camp areas. So if we go uh, like with two werewolves right up in their face, something like that, uh, we're going to give these guys um, some reflect beams, of course. And then all we're going to do is put two of the sonic bats behind. So let's go ahead and get a uh, boost star in first. And then we're going to put two sonic bats behind. Now this one, you will get some shots off up into the air a little bit. So you can always put them up here and they'll aim down, but then a lot of those projectiles are going to go into the ground instead of into packs of enemies from behind. So you basically got two setups um, here. One way, shots are going to go into the ground. The other way, shots are going to go into the air. So we are going to lose a few shots, but we're going to get the benefit of that projectile pierce. And then here, of course, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to get us uh, two... Beastie Boy Werewolves right up front. Let's get a little Reflect Action in. And then let's get our two Sonic Bats. We'll give them the Buff Beam. We'll give them the Destructive Pylon. And I forgot to give them a uh, Boost Star. We'll get that in there as well. Maybe. There we go. Boost Star right about like that. So we've actually only used uh, 1,200 of the 1,300 possible to use. So, I mean, we could always do something else. But do we need to do anything else? I don't think we do. I think we're going to just slap. So uh, wave one, of course, um, will have the least amount of killing power. As we get a little bit more mana and are able to do more upgrades, we're going to see a whole lot more killing power. You see here... Man, the projectiles just real clean, just go through everything in the lane. So the Chieftain are going to make it out, but as they're firing at the Chieftain, they're just going to slap all of those baddies back behind. So yeah, the lanes just melt super fast. Now, as I mentioned over here, we are going to get some shots up in the air. So that is a little bit less than ideal. If you could find a perfect elevation, like maybe actually right here on top of this route, can you build on that? Hmm, I'm sure you can. Yeah, you can. So, right here actually would probably provide a really clean angle. Let's throw one down and just take a look at it. This one's not going to be boosted and buffed, of course. Yeah, it seems like this elevation right here is a really, really good angle here. This lane, they do pretty well. The goblins will sneak underneath the projectiles, but even those range goblins, as they bounce up in the air to throw, they're going to get slapped in the face with that super cool projectile. And oh yeah, it's just burning off. So this map, like I said, it does run a little bit slow. It's not terrible. But I think that's the speed of the map running is one of the reasons people don't do this one. Uh, this, of course, is going to drop the ingots for upgrading or changing weapons. So with that in mind, it is a hot crafting material. You know, it's a crafting material that um, is going to be used. You're going to be using ingots. There's no doubt about it, um, especially if you like playing around with different weapons and swapping weapons around. You will definitely be needing some ingots. However... Some of the other ingot maps just run quicker. And then, of course, you can do, um, you know, the boss map and get that Earth Guardian's weapons and get more ingots. So that's one of the reasons I think you never see anyone play in this one. But this map is awesome. Um, thematically, they did a great job with it. Uh, this map arrived as part of a Halloween event originally. This was a... Uh, what a map that was just particularly for the event and then of course the map stayed in the game afterwards so um the incursion was that version of that halloween event map here comes a captain let's check out uh mr captain here and uh see how well he does without any uh real intervention from me see just big chunks of damage uh these guys do slap they hit real real hard The explosion we're not really seeing a lot of, but that is an added benefit, especially in these areas where the enemies are really close together. Ah, 
I just absolutely love that projectile. It's the most original projectile in the game, I think. Besides, like, the the new uh, crab cannon shooting the squid. This is just a very original-looking projectile. That's, uh, you know, a lot of the defensive projectiles, when they get introduced to the game, you can recognize the projectile and say, oh, well, you know, say that came from this. Like the Spectral Knights, for example, uh, coming from these guys here. Uh, the Sonic Bat, it's got its its original, its own original business. I just think it looks really cool. That, and it's huge. So, it, remember, it's only got to touch an enemy to do damage to them. Any portion of it. It doesn't have to pass right through their center. So, you see, like, over here, man, the enemies are just really dying off. Uh, way down inside the spawn. Of course, the bad part about that is you're not going to be able to collect that mana. Uh, we'll be able to yoink some of it when we get the collection range increase during the build phase. Let's see, we got an ogre over here. Uh, we better keep an eye on that one. With the flame aura set up here, that's really the only downside is this is a, a boss lane. So you're going to get bosses out of this one. Uh, the flame auras, they'll kill it, but it'll take about a month uh, to kill it, so... You're going to uh, do better just giving a little assist on that one yourself. And then we got a Tuscar. Let's see how Tuscar fares. Once again, just big, chunky, chunky amounts of damage ripping off. So nice. He made it to the wall, but just barely. We know that this is a boss lane, so let's get uh, some upgrades in over here. Like we can get both of those fully jacked, and we'll just let it fly and uh, do some upgrades on the fly over here. Wave 4 already. Uh, so, I mean, although it is a slow running map, it's not grueling. It's not like this is a 20 minute map or anything. If you're farming this one and you just come in and slap down your defenses and go, you're going to complete the map pretty quick. It's not going to be the fastest, but it certainly is not going to be too terribly slow. You can also throw like an aura over here and um, it will help killing those flyers. If you use like a frost strike aura over here, it will freeze the flyers and they'll drop down into the goo. And then uh, that is going to insta, insta slap them, of course. 229 left. Uh, the big packs are pretty much all over here. And we just get, I mean, look at the mana trail, how deep it's going. Uh, we are losing, like I mentioned, we're losing a lot of projectiles into the air. But overall, holy crap, it kills way down into there. Uh, there is just no doubt about that. Little Malthus action here. Uh, we got Quibs rolling out right here. And I think we'll just let it fly for the final wave. And uh, not even worry about the upgrades. The Zerks are getting slapped down before they make the wall. The Chieftains are having to pop their immunity way, way up the lane. Which is good and bad. Um, if the Chieftain don't pop their immunity until they're closer, then of course the anti-heal is going to keep them healed up. But by popping all the way up the lane, a lot of times their immunity is gone by the time they make the wall. And then they just insta, you know, get insta wrecked. If you could get just a tiny bit more damage out of them, I think you'd be able to kill the chieftain before they went immune. And those are full upgrade. I guess we could always upgrade the uh the Boostara and the Buff Beam, and that would give us enough damage to, to uh, not necessarily one-shot, but 
uh, to at least kill the chieftain before they pop their immunity bubble. Fifty bads left. I mean, we're pretty much over the hump and just waiting for everything to come out to die now. Want to check the old RNG on this one? Like I said, I traditionally have—I don't know—I've just had great luck on this map. No, I mean I know that luck is not really a huge factor, uh, as the ten out of tens are a guaranteed drop after a certain number of mod drops. But you always get that little remote uh, kind of pie in the sky chance of getting one early. Kind of like re-rolling. Every now and then you're going to get a re-roll done uh, before you hit the 286. Well, the same is true with mod drops as well. And uh, let's check the loot. And <laughs> there we go. There is that Temple of Necrotic Luck. But... Is it a skelly boom? Let's see. Oh, Earth Servo. I mean, not something I really need, but on the same note, not something I'm going to throw away either. So, um, there is my, uh, my superstition on Temple of the Necrotic. Uh, Payday has arrived. Even if it's just an Earth Servo, we'll take it. But anyway, that will do it for now. Thanks an absolute ton for watching, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy. Thank you.